Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to explain the properties of measurable sets. Let E be a measurable set. Then we want to prove that any translate E plus Y is also a measurable set where Y is any real number. Okay. Furthermore, the measure of E plus Y is same as that the measure of E. So what we want to show that we want to show that E plus Y is measurable. Means for any set A, the outer measure of a plus y is same as that outer measure of uh, sorry outer measure of a is same as that outer measure of a plus e plus y plus the outer measure of a intersection with e plus y complement and what is given to us that e set is measurable means for any set a we are having this thing that the outer measure of a is equal to outer measure of a intersection e plus outer measure of a intersection e complement and further we know that the outer measure satisfy the translation invariant property so we can replace each outer measure with plus y right so we have written this thing that the outer measure of a plus y is same as that outer measure of a intersection e plus y plus outer measure of a intersection e complement plus y now further we can see that that the a intersection e plus y is same as that a plus y intersection with e plus y you can see with the help of an example or you can verify it by considering any element from the left hand side and you can show that this is also a member of right hand side and similarly if you consider any element from the right hand side you can show that this is an element of left hand side now just see with the help of an example let's suppose a is any open interval 0 to 2 and e is any open interval 1 to 4 then what will be a intersection e this is having the common point which is going from 1 to 2 and let's suppose y is any real number it's uh, let it be 5 so if uh, we consider this that a intersection e plus 5 means we shift each with 5 so we get this is 6 and this is 7 right so inter a intersection e plus 5 will be the open interval 6 comma 7 however if you find out the right hand side a plus y a plus y means 5 plus comma 7 e plus y means 6 comma um, this 5 plus 4 9 6 comma 9 right and now if you take the intersection of these two sets you will have 6 comma 7 which is same as that this one so we can easily see that this that this set can be written as this similarly with the complement one so you can write this now you can substitute these values over here so what we have we have the outer measure of a plus y is equal to outer measure of a plus y intersection with e plus y plus the outer measure of a plus y intersection with e complement plus y and further we can see that e complement plus y is same as that e plus y whole complement you can also verify this thing by considering any element from this set and you can show that this is contained in this similarly consider element from the right hand side and you can show that this is element of this so this is contained in this so from these two are equal and we can see with the help of our example also your e is an open interval 1 to 4 if you consider y to be 5 you get this is 6 comma 9 what is your e complement this is minus infinity to 1 union with 4 to infinity e complement plus y will be minus infinity to 6 union 9 to infinity which is same as that e plus y whole complement so these two sets are same so we can replace e complement plus y with e plus y whole complement over here and also we can replace the a set with a minus y so we will get this is outer measure of a this is outer measure of a intersection e plus y plus outer measure of a intersection e complement plus y which is replaced with e plus y whole complement so we get this thing right so from here what we have this in this equality and which implies that e plus y set is measurable by the definition of measurability right further we know that uh, outer measure satisfy the translation invariant property so outer measure of e plus y will be equal to outer measure of e however we have proved this thing that e plus y set is measurable so we can replace outer measure with simple m so th these two things are same 
so this completes the proof of the result that whenever e set is measurable it's translate e plus y is also measurable and the measures are same so this is the first property that whenever e set is measurable its translation is uh, also a measurable set now the next theorem which is uh, related to the monotone sequence behavior of the sets so we consider e i to be as any infinite decreasing sequence of measurable sets decreasing means e i plus 1 is contained in e i and this is given to us that for at least one i the set is having finite measure means it might be e1 is having infinite measure e2 it is having infinite measure but e3 is the set which is having the finite measure and since this is a decreasing sequence so after e3 every set has finite measure because it is a decreasing sequence of measurable sets so this condition is required here that at least one set is having finite measure okay so this is very important that one set should have finite measure then the result says that the measure of the intersection of these infinite decreasing sequence of ei is same as at the limit the measure of en as n is approaching to infinity now just see the proof what is given to us that for at least one i the measure of the set is infinity uh, is less than infinity so we assume that let p be the least positive integer so that the measure of ep is finite so if the measure of ep is finite clearly the measure of every set after p will be finite because this is a decreasing sequence of measurable sets so we what we have we have measure of e i will be finite for every i greater than equals to p now we put this intersection of e i to be e and f i to be the consecutive difference of two sets means e1 minus e2 e2 minus e3 e3 minus e4 and so on so this is our f i now clearly these f i is are measurable and pairwise disjoint why they are measurable because we know that the difference of two measurable set is measurable and why they are disjoint it is clearly from the figure that one set is contained in other so if you consider the difference of these two you will have this portion e1 minus 2 e2 is this one and e2 minus e3 is the inner one clearly they are disjoint right so fi is a sequence of measurable sets and pairwise disjoint sets now we consider ep minus e ep is the first set having the finite measure and e is the intersection of all these i this is very inner set right clearly it will be a subset of ep and this can be written as the union of fi's now just see you can also verify again with the help of uh, uh, the theory that uh, you consider any element from the left hand side and you can show that this is a subset of the right hand side similarly consider any arbitrary element of the right hand side and you can show that this is an element of left hand side from here we have these two sets are same or we can one can see easily that what will be ep minus e let's suppose your uh, ep is e2 let's suppose this p is 2 then e2 minus e will be you have to take the union of all these uh, except the inner one that common one and this side also you are having the same thing that you have to take the union of e2 minus e3 then e3 minus e4 then e4 minus and so on right so at last you get this in e infinity minus e infinity that will be the uh, common points that will be the intersection of all these and that will be cancel out right so we we can see easily see that uh, ep minus e can be written as the union of ei minus ei plus 1 and that is nothing but fi now i apply to measure to both side you get the measure of this will be equal to measure of this now here this sequence is a pairwise disjoint so union can be replaced with the summation we know that it satisfy the additive property so we have this thing now we can open the measure of ep minus e since the measures are finite and one is and contained in other so we can write this set as the measure of ep minus measure of e same way here 
and when we apply this summation open this summation we get all the terms inside this will be cancel out we will left with the first and the last one depending on n right so we are having the measure of ep minus limit n approaches to infinity measure of en since the measure of ep is finite so we can cancel out from the left side and as well as from the right hand side and we can cancel the sign also and we get the measure of e is equal to the limit of measure of en which thing we have to prove that the measure of intersection of ei will be the limit and approaching to infinity measure of en provided this sequence is a sequence of measurable sets and at least one set is having the finite measure only then we can cancel out these two things so this condition is important we cannot uh, discard this condition we cannot drop this condition right so same way we can prove the corollary that the uh, if your ei is the infinite sequence of measurable set with measure of even first set finite then this will be equal to this thing right so in the remark we, we will see that we cannot drop this condition that the measure of ei is finite for at least one i for this we can consider an example let's suppose en is a set it's a interval going from n to infinity so e1 will be 1 to infinity e2 will be 2 to infinity e3 3 to infinity and so on this is a decreasing sequence but having the measure of each set as infinite because we know that in case of interval the measure is will be its length so measure of each set is infinite and it is in decreasing sequence and when you find out the intersection of all these we get that uh, this will be empty right so measure of uh, the intersection of all ens is empty is phi and measure of this set will be zero however the measure of en is infinity so these two things are not same so we cannot drop this condition that the measure of ei should be finite for at least one i right we can see with the help of this example this set is Uh, this is an example of the sequence of measurable set with infinite measure and we can see that that these two things are not same the same way we are having a theorem for increasing sequence of measurable sets such that rather taking intersection now the union the union of the measure will be equal to the limit and going to infinity measure of en this can be proved with the help of the previous theorem Uh, here there is no condition that the measure of at least one set should be finite this is because if measure of one set is infinity then union set is also infinity here it is also infinity so infinity is equal to infinity the trivially hold right so we will assume that the measure of e i is finite for at least one i we can set e to be the union of e i s f i to be the difference of the consecutive ones we get f i s are measurable and pair by disjoint we can write e minus e1 because uh, it is increasing sequence increasing sequence means what your e1 is contained in e2 is contained in e3 and so on so you are having infinite increasing sequence so measure of e minus e1 will be equal to the measure of union pair wise means you can write as summation now you can substitute the value of fi now you can open this summation the terms are cancel out you left with the second last and second term and since uh, we assume that the measure of uh, e1 is finite so we can cancel out both side and we get the result which we want to prove so these are the properties of a sequence of measurable sets whenever the we are having a sequence of measurable sets with some other condition we get the decreasing for decreasing the intersection is same as at the limit and for increasing sequence the union is same as at the limit measure of en the same way if uh, ei is uh, our measurable we, uh, we will see that the limit set is same as at the intersection and that is measurable so its limit supremum limit infimum which can be written as the countable union and intersection of eis so they are also measurable so limit infimum limit supremum they are measurable sets 
so if we are having a uh, ei as a sequence of measurable set then the set limit supremum ei limit infimum ei they are also measurable